Teach him, pale face brother, all about Red Man. Good. This should be most enlightening. Ah. Uh, red, red, red. Interesting. When did he first Unfortunate. Us? When did he first say us? us? Say us? Why did he ask you how? She should be my favorite movie. Why does he ask you how? I remember this. Why does he ask you how? See more Caucasians say this then? <laughs> Natives. The engine didn't know all the things that he should learn a lot. I don't remember this in Peter Pan at all. So when you're a kid, you don't know what you're looking at. Oh, it's so racist. Like, <laughs> that's f***ed up. So while many do love this film, there are also many that feel that the portrayal of the indigenous people in this film is pretty offensive. Absolutely. I mean, for one thing, it doesn't have anything about, like, their nation or about, like, who they are. Redskins is just, like, the, it's such a derogatory term. And then they made, like, like, the native peoples in this movie, like, have, like, actual, like, bold red skin. Searchers? I don't know. I don't know if you ever saw this movie. And I'm guessing he's a white man. It's a John Wayne movie. <sighs> Savages will be slaughtered. I am sure. I haven't even seen this. <laughs> but they generally are. Always portrayed as a villain. Um, and not as somebody who's trying to protect the land their way of life and fighting off invaders who did horrific things to them, but John Wayne's the hero. So Western movies were some of the first representations of indigenous Americans in entertainment, but they were often used as the antagonist. Yes. So what are your personal thoughts on Western films? I personally don't watch too many Western films just because how many times can you see <laughs> people of your uh, ethnicity that they're representing, be killed, slaughtered. The thing that's always missing here is that Indians were trying to save themselves from like, you know, complete annihilation. Of course they were gonna fight. I did like this film uh, because I was born in Colorado. So uh, cowboys, horses, uh, that was us, you know, we had horses. We didn't really think about this the social implications about it. My dad has always loved, you know, uh, Western films, despite, you know, being Native American, um, because during the times that these are made, you know, they're, this is the way people thought. And like, I, I kind of think it's stupid for like, okay, um, To Kill a Mockingbird. Uh, was banned from schools because of the use of the n-word in it which I think is offensive and, and it's awful but it's like it's also history and I think you should not like ignore history because then you don't learn the first American people keep America beautiful they held it in simple reverence ah Iron Eyes Cody Iron Eyes Cody is actually Sicilian all around us are reminders of how far we still have to go this is a crying Indian so on where he tears up to contact the <laughs> Keep America Beautiful team what is that litter right keep them what is that a road 99 Park Avenue New York New York I got chills from that. A different perspective of like Native Americans being like the caretakers of the earth and like pushing us to like actually try to take care of our planet. So this was part of a PSA starring Iron Eyes Cody. Who's an actor. So Cody was not Native American. That man wasn't Native American? Yet he claimed he was of Native descent, even though his parents were from Sicily. He somewhat kind of acted as a cultural ambassador for Native Americans, and he tried to sought out to correct common misconceptions about Native Americans whom he claimed to be his people. How interesting. There were a lot of people that had lived their, their civilized life to live with the Indians and, and uh, even white men. Everybody loved him, actually. Every culture should be appreciated to an extent as long as, like, you appreciate the right reasons for the culture and what they do. You can appropriate, like, uh, the image of, like, the Native culture as long as you're telling a story that's, like, the true story of it. He probably was appreciating, appreciating the culture in itself, which I do. That is very nice and genuine, I think he really was. 
Um, I just wish they actually used a Native American person. Pocahontas. I had a big crush on Pocahontas. First of all, she was a child. No! <laughs> If you kill him, you'll have to kill me too. Daughter, stand back. I won't! I love him, father. Disney. Look around you. This is where the path of hatred has brought us. She should be saying that to John Smith, not her father. This is the path I choose, father. What will yours be? Very intense. I feel like as a child, you're like rooting for Pocahontas and John, and then like, from this perspective, you're like, I know how this story really ends. That scene is really important. It really erases, you know, like the violence of conquest, right? Because, you know, if, if, the, if the native woman is heterosexual and falls in love with the settlers, it makes it seem like we invited conquest to come to our lands, right? Um, that we wanted this. Even though it's pretty much incorrect of her life, I do kind of appreciate them trying to at least um, make it be more of a gentle message. Many claim that Disney kind of distorted the story of Pocahontas, focusing on her relationship with a man and kind of placing that above all else. Yeah, making it like a love story. The real Pocahontas was actually around 11 years old, and she was actually captured by the colonists while trying to help the settlers. And she later was even brought back to England as proof that it was possible to civilize a, quote, savage, end quote. DMA, I'm not going to get emotional. No, it's happening because I'm actually very angry. It's just another form of whitewashing. What's so crazy about that whole thing is literally the English were like the savage. They were like the savages coming to someone else's like territory. You know, Thomas, I don't know what- It's about to go, okay. I just recently watched this for a second time. I don't know what you're talking about half the time. Why is- <laughs> I don't know. I mean, you just go on and on talking about nothing. Sherman Alexei movie. You're always trying to sound like some damn medicine man or something. I mean, how many times have you seen, how many times have you seen Dances with Wolves? A hundred, two hundred? Dances with Wolves is hard to watch. You have seen it that many times, haven't you? Don't you even know how to be a real Indian? I guess not. I think he has the wrong idea of what an Indian should be. First of all, quit grinning like an Indian. <laughs> Indians ain't supposed to smile like that, get stoic. As I'm smiling. I feel like I'm grinning like an idiot too. No, <laughs> like this. I guess, if you call that stoic. You gotta look mean or people won't respect you. I mean, that's more real in the fact that, like, they're wearing regular clothes. That movie was, like, so important to me when it came out because it was, like, the first time I'd seen anybody like me represented in film. I wish there was more contemporary films on Native Americans. I truly do. This is a really good movie. And actually, the main actress in this movie was the voice of Pocahontas. So this was a clip from the film Smoke Signals which was the first feature-length film that was written, directed, and starred Native American actors. I did not know that, though. That's representation when people of color or indigenous people are behind the camera. So at the time, many hoped that this would pave the way for more indigenous storytellers in Hollywood. So why do you think it's been so difficult for this culture to make its way into Hollywood? I've noticed that like a common thing for modern Native Americans is that it's hard to get out of the reservation. I feel like it's bad because they're set set back to begin with. Network heads like will meet with like people who they know or like people who they know who know other people and like usually those are like all like white people. The people who are in power really have to like make an effort to open up that door. Oh. What is it? Modern. Oh god. This is not a good movie. And the Indian is Johnny Depp, right? Don't believe Johnny is native at all. <laughs> We're lost, aren't we? I knew it. Just follow the force. That was your idea? And Tonto yeah, had a very... Dead, you know what? Unappropriate name, unfortunately. Tonto means dumb, dumb person, I believe. Hello. Uh, if you could just point us in the right direction, we'll take it from here. <laughs> okay. What's that? I like this movie because it was freaky. 
Was that supposed to be funny? It's like a modern representation that's not exactly a positive thing, but at the same time, it's like, it's a character. There were many people that were upset that a prominent Native American character like Tonto was not played by somebody who identified as Native American. Yeah. It's like this weird f brawl of, of bringing people to the forefront, but at the same time making money, but at the same time, you know, uh, doing the character justice. So what are your thoughts on when films and shows kind of cast actors to portray a race that they're not really related to? I would say just give them a chance. Stop, you know, having somebody else pretend they are something else. I don't think too much about, mainly because too much of other people doing other races, because that's what acting is. I don't think that's wrong, because that's, that's make-believe. Some Native people who are playwrights or whatever talk about how there aren't enough Native actors. So they write, you know, plays that are for, you know, for white people. I don't want us to give up on ourselves. I want us to really believe that someday this can happen. So as you know, the entire cast of this episode are either Native American or Indigenous American, including myself. Yes. Yes, that makes me so incredibly happy. And we wanted to talk about the representation of Native Americans throughout the years in film and television. Cool. So, as you've seen, there have been some authentic and some non-authentic indigenous representation in media, but there often isn't much representation of indigenous people at all, with many issues as well as amazing stories about the cultures often getting lost or just unseen. So for you personally, what does being indigenous mean to you? I think I'm still trying to figure that out. It means loving myself and my culture and not living up to like any kind of like European standards of beauty. It's definitely like in my DNA, but because it was lost, like I just like don't, like I, like I wish I was more connected. There's just like a lack of like information like within my own family. I've been to like, a traditional powwow. My dad was showing me, this is where our family comes from, is this kind of thing. It's a heritage thing for me. It's affected uh, the way I think of myself. I didn't speak English until I was six years old. I could hear people say, speak English, you're in America. But I was born here. My father was born here. It's hard, right? Because what you also see around you is all the loss, all the things that we don't have anymore. We are beautiful people who have not been defeated, even though, you know, there's been 500 years of conquest on this continent. So Indigenous Peoples Day was originally called Columbus Day and first became a federal holiday in 1937. However, in 1992, Berkeley, California replaced the holiday with Indigenous Peoples Day since many say Columbus did not discover America, but rather began the colonization of it. Yeah, it's like if I drove to your house, I was like, I found this, and then I did horrible things to like you. At least eight states and 130 cities and towns have replaced this holiday, but as great of a step as this is, there are still many states that haven't adopted the new name for this holiday. What does changing the name of this holiday mean to you? I think it should be exactly what it is. It's important that people understand like what Columbus Day actually stands for. Because where Columbus did not. <laughs> Discover America, you know, that's, I, w I would think, you would think that's common knowledge at this point. I think changing it to Indigenous Peoples Day, I don't see anything wrong with that. A lot of states are slow to adopt new things because tradition. The name change is sweeping it under the rug and doesn't deal with the issue, but it's a step forward. I don't want it to just be symbolic. I want it to be material. It can't just go nicely to Indigenous People Day without like a lot of education. Finally, there are many Indigenous people around the world from different regions, and many feel underrepresented and would love for their stories to be heard more. So what strides do you hope to see in the representation of Indigenous people across the world moving forward? Um. I don't know if this is a good answer, but I really feel like YouTube and other forms of online media are going to be very effective. It's nice that, you know, that, you know, they do have one or two people who are actually in the political spectrum and nice to get more people, but it would be nice to see even more. This is a good start. I just send so much love out to all the indigenous people. Like, I feel it. I feel your pain. I feel it. I feel it. I know what it's like to feel disenfranchised and marginalized. I'm still trying to find my roots, and they're so 
hard to be discovered, you know, because they were ripped out of the ground. Hey everyone, Lauren Producer at FBE. Thank you so much for watching this episode. As somebody who's part of the Tohono O'odham and Apache tribes, this video was such an honor for me to make, to shed a little bit of light about the representation of Native Americans in entertainment and media. I also wanted to thank all the reactors who came in today and shared their personal stories. We do know that there are indigenous cultures all over the world that are underrepresented, so we want to know their stories as well. So if you have any, let us know in the comments down below. Bye everyone and have a happy Indigenous Peoples Day.